So we're going to play two more duets out of the Arban book at the back. Number 43, the Bolero, and number 44, Norma from Bellini, uh, the melody from, from the, the opera Norma. And starting with the Bolero, it's, uh, it's a little bit more about the, uh, the attack and, uh, excuse me, attack and, um, you know, tonguing technique. So, uh, Beno, when you teach your students, how do you talk to them about tonguing techniques? <laughs> das ist ein Problem. Mm. Wenn, ich, wenn ich merke, die sind technisch und auch vom Ansatz so weit, dass sie es machen können. Ich habe einen sehr guten Schüler, der eigentlich vom Greifen her grifftechnisch und Blattspielen mm -hmm. richtig gut ist. Mm -hmm. Aber er kann keine Doppelzunge machen. So he's very good at, uh, at uh, uh, reading yeah. and technically, just generally, yeah. but he doesn't understand how to double tongue. Yeah. Double tongue. Yeah, er kann kein K, bringt das K. Ja, aber well, tongues are different. Er kann sprechen, aber yeah. er kann, sobald er, mach, er bläst, macht er, tut, tut, kann man nur okay. wieder lauter ziehen. When I was a little boy, I, uh, my, my dad uh, taught me to accent the K. If you accent the K when you practice slowly, with an air impulse, yes. then when you get faster, you can't really use this air impulse so much, but you have trained the tongue to be more distinct in, distinct in its pronunciation of the K. Man kann es deutlicher dann aussprechen. And the accenturing of the K. Did you know that Rafael Mendez had a big problem also with just single tongue? Uh -huh. He couldn't single he couldn't single tongue any faster than ta 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 ta. <laughs> so his father taught him how to double tongue. Ta ka ta ka ta ka. And actually, tiki, tiki, tiki is what he said. Mm -hmm. When he was just a little boy. Remember, he was mm -hmm. playing the trumpet in his father's mariachi band when he was yeah. like five. And uh, they, he would practice on his way to school, pronouncing, pronouncing, pronouncing this, uh, this uh, thing. And they, they, he, everyone would hear him walking down the street going, tiki, 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 tiki. tiki. And even later in his life, he almost double-tongued everything. He very seldom mm. single-tongued. He was always double-tongued. So what was interesting about him is that, uh, first of all, his nickname was Tiki Tiki when he was a little boy. And he played everything with a double-tongue. But just let's, how would you play this bolero, what I just played? You want to play the first part or the second part? Here's your guy. Play the first part? Okay. I'm, I just want you to play alone first of all, and we can compare how you approach it. Also, ich würde hier in dem Tempo keine Doppelzunge nehmen. Mm -hmm. But if you had to use a double. Then what happens is that the rhythm is not then precise. It stays sounds like that, as if they weren't sixteenth but thirty-second notes. That some, some, sometimes is very effectful. It sounds very Spanish, like really like a bolero. But what it says here from the rhythm. It, No, you're right, it's almost so slow that it's difficult to double tongue yeah. it at all. But practicing a slow double tongue helps when you want to play faster, though. And to yeah, accentuate the, 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 the K a little bit more. I find it's easier in that range. It's, the lower you get, the more difficult it is to double tongue. Uh, okay. <laughs> And the large bore of the instrument, especially the flugelhorn, make it especially difficult because you don't have the resistance. The smaller bore of a trumpet, it's easy to double yeah. tongue with. So, and also the cup is very much more funnel cup, so you get that fuller flugelhorn kind of a sound. So, playing this on the flugelhorn is doubly difficult because of the bore of the instrument and playing it. But why don't you play the first part and I play the second part? And okay. 
we play at a temple where, where it's approaching double tongue temple. And if you want, we can play 30 seconds, but I think 16th is... Okay, okay. So, why don't you count it down? So, but later then they, they, he wants to slur them. It's only when the, 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 it's the same note, three A's in a row, that you really need to double tongue at all. Mm. Because here, he's slurring everything when it's a da 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 but I double tongue everything. Okay. Let's do it faster, and, okay. and where the slurs tongue anyway. Okay, okay. Okay. That's interesting. It's again uh, this idea of being able to move the air. I think uh, compression is the most important. Yeah. Compression here yeah. the Zunge is this yeah. on O. Yeah. Can we? I was playing a little bit before a little bit of our band, um, um, not our band, but a little bit of um, the Carnival of Venice. And there is one place in the Carnival of Venice, or well, there are two places actually, one where they're triple tonguing, but here where it's double tonguing. This is always difficult because, as you were pointing out before, when you change the different compression because of the vowels, it's not the tonguing, it's the change in the compression through the vowels that makes it difficult to maintain the airflow. Unless you use extra power, mm -hmm. like he's written, really written here, diminuendo going down. Now, strangely enough, it doesn't matter how often I practice it, this is more difficult than that. This is the same thing, chromatic, starting on the yeah. F, starts here in a G, and all yeah, of a sudden I can't do it. Is this, you have the same problem? Ja, mein, ich habe sie mit dem Flügel noch nie ja, probiert, so schnell zum Spiel. Der Flügelhorn, <lacht> because of the bore size, it's, it's more... Ah, yeah, but, but deutlich. Yeah, but you, because you need more air and you need more air movement. There's less resistance. The instrument's more about tone than it's about technique. I mean, that's vegan cornet. Th yeah, that's vegan cornet. I mean, exactly. Let me see if I can. See. This, this sort of this is almost like almost a mini trumpet mouthpiece in the in the instrument. I really don't like the sound as much as an authentic cornet mouthpiece, which would be more like maybe this. Mm. 
But it's again to, to maintain a clear double tongue uh, uh, clarity of this, the speaking of notes, it's important to use more air. Mm. I mean, yeah. that's what we're talking about is air, right? Yes. Okay. What about here? Have you ever played these? Yeah. I mean, th this is always the Paradestück. <laughs> you want to do it? We'll start at the beginning. So it's always a question of the air it's and with the flute, it's more difficult, right? Maybe, vielleicht geht's dann nachher dann mit Kanet oder mit Trompete besser. Leichter, <laughs> yeah, because you practice it against your... Yeah. <laughs> Using more air with it, but uh, it's. I think it's a question of, again, uh, thinking about the contour and also as long yeah. as one can yeah. accent down here to train the tongue and then in the end use more air but the the thing is here compression airflow and the dynamic because they want you to play piano i mean it says piano here <laughs> yeah which makes it i mean if you can play it forte most trumpet players play that and they play it fortissimo or yeah. whatever and but it, it ruins the music it does it has to be elegant and light and i i sort of like the flugelhorn for it but it's <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure that it's it. I think it's probably best on the cornet. Yeah. I think it mag a good Übung sein dafür, aber nicht direkt zum Blasen an dafür. Langsame Teil, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Langsam, aber man kann nicht schlecht dazwischen am Wechsel auf Flügel hören. Ja, ja. Das wäre dann natürlich schön, ein Flügel und Part. Wenn wir change our instruments in the piece, it might be an interesting thing, play part of it on the trumpet, part on the flügelhorn, part on the cornet. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Uh, I have a trumpet to catch you that I like to use. But the time is all, all, all over now for this YouTube, for this and... Why don't we look at one of these Arban etudes afterwards? I'd, I'd like to do the chromatic Ar Arban etude. Do you know number 14? Yeah. So we're going to look at number 14 of uh, the grand studies from Mr. Arban in the next YouTube. Thank you, and we'll see us again at La Tromba, Richard Carson Stewart, the man with the horns, with his guest Beno Engelhardt today. Bye.